can toss it around a little bit. Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and thanks to McGovern Honda in Everett, Massachusetts, we're driving the brand new 2022 Honda Civic Sport. And this is a little more down to earth than let's say the GT2, GT3 RSs, and of course the LFA. Let's drive a car that you might actually use as a daily driver that you might buy for your family, yourself, whatever. And the Civic has always been an easy to recommend vehicle. There was a little hiccup in the ninth generation when they got a little junky and then Consumer Reports called them on it and they immediately fixed it. So now here we are with the new 2022 Civic. And number one, you're gonna notice it's so much more docile looking. It's got nice clean lines. It is certainly not as polarizing as the 10th generation. So we don't have this wild boy racer vibe. We've got nice comfort access. I don't know if that's the terminology for Honda. It is for BMW. To get into this beautifully appointed cabin, they've done a really good job. Let's focus on the outside first because it's starting to rain and I want to show you under the hood. This is the base two liter naturally aspirated 158 horsepower power plant and unfortunately it is only mated to the CVT in the sedan for the hatchback or for those who are really particular the liftback you can option the six-speed manual with this engine and that is probably the Tedward choice I like naturally aspirated even though this uh, could use a little bit of power we're going to talk about that when we get out there but look at how much room there is under here it is a very nice concise little package and yeah, it's in front of the front wheels for sure. We're not trying to get front mid here, but my goodness, this is a nice engineering and manufacturing marvel of uh, packaging, because this is pretty clean. In the rear, nice clean lines, beautiful tail lights, and a single chrome exhaust tip back here. We have a multi-link rear suspension, so the handling is fairly nice in the trunk loads of room this is nice let's let's take a look under here we have a spare tire it's not a full size it's a donut but my goodness do i appreciate that and is this a funnel is this a funnel for your oil honda honda really knows how to please a man that is impressive stuff i i, I love a good funnel gas tank there is no cap it's capless i don't know if that matters to you it doesn't really matter to me but it's kind of nice you never have to forget it or have those people yelling at you on the highway to say hey your cap is off anyway in that's never happened to me i don't know why i said that in the rear we have like you know pretty standard entry level rear seats it's nothing nothing spectacular but there is plenty of room back here you have a little toe tap Ooh, even this carpet's pretty nice this is a good place to be Honda does a very nice job of making sure that all the touch points that you're going to be interacting with feel solid. So even though they may go a little cheaper on certain plastics elsewhere, uh, you know, door handles, rock solid, all this stuff is great. So let's head up into the front of the car and go for a drive. Let's see, can we get lower? Yeah, we can get nice and low in this seat. Fairly comfortable. No heated seat option, at least not on this one. But the layout of this cabin is so clean and I like knurled buttons and knobs and oh man, they did a good job. Some people may not like this screen just because it's like a little bit tacked on to the dashboard. I'm fine with it, this does not bother me. And then we've got loads of storage space in the center, all the goodies. I feel like this is like the most normal car review I've done in a very long time. Glove box, sure. Okay, let's go for a drive. We've got a push to start here. Fires up nicely with our digital tack. It looks like the speedometer, the background, obviously LCD backlit, but I think that is an actual, uh, an actual analog needle. The first thing you notice when you interact with the car is the leather wrapped steering wheel and the leather wrapped shifter. I think maybe they've taken some cues from Hyundai. Hyundai has uh, really done a good job of selling cars on the spot because their cars feel premium when you when you get in them and start driving them. And uh, all right, we've got our headlights on auto. Let's get out there and go for a drive. Oh, it's so smooth. And look, I'm not a big fan of CVTs. I'm never gonna choose the CVT. It's just not gonna happen, but I can appreciate a good CVT when I drive one. pass our CVT Prius over here. Take a little bump, look at that. 18 inch wheels, 235 I think, section tires. 
I am just so impressed with how far the entry level market has come, man. <laughs> old, old cars, old cheap cars felt like old cheap cars. Let's hit a bump. See, it just absorbs everything. I can't believe this is the level of refinement that we get in entry level cars. This car with destination is like $24,000. This is a great place to be for 24 grand. There are different drive modes. So right now I believe we're in eco. If we go up, we'll go in sport. And then down to normal. Really all that's gonna do is probably change the throttle mapping and just the aggressiveness of the transmission to uh, get you up in the revs. Let's try the paddles. All right, so the paddles are a gimmick. <laughs> they always are on the CVT. It always just feels like a silly afterthought, but I guess it's helpful if you're going downhill and you don't want to ride your brakes. That's fine, I get it. But I guess the problem is if one automaker's doing it and then the others aren't, then it's a strike against the automakers who aren't. So you kind of just have to keep up with it, I guess. Pull over for emergency vehicles, always a good thing to do. Some people don't do it. You notice this? People who don't pull over for emergency vehicles or then who try to pass you after they've done it. I hate that, it drives me nuts. Turning radius is, you know, it's par. I think it's par. I, I, I kind of expected like a, just a touch more. Um, I wanted it to be a little tighter. It'll be fine for the city for sure. But like, you know, there's definitely been a couple of times when I thought, ooh, I might have to make a three point turn out of this when I really would have liked to just send it. So how does she handle? Definitely gonna understeer, and unless you're really going for it, I don't know that you're gonna get that lift off oversteer. Have to be going a little faster in a shallower corner, I think, to understand those types of dynamics. But, you know, it's got enough grip. It's like, and you know, you're not buying this as a sports car. You're buying this as a car that's comfortable, reliable, and that you can just stack miles on without paying outrageous amounts of fuel. You know, my M3, is just not it when it comes to being like the solid daily driver. Does it work? Is it reliable enough? Sure, but I'm getting 21 miles per gallon at best. In something like this, you're gonna be eking out closer to 40. And I mean, look, I'm not having fun in my M3 at like traffic speeds. One of the beautiful things about electric cars is just how relaxing they are to drive. And that relaxation comes from the fact that you've got low down torque, I mean, instant torque, but you also don't have like much for road noise or, or mechanical noises. And as much as I know everyone bemoans the encroaching doom of the internal combustion engine, there is something to be said for a solid EV that does that task. And the same goes for this. There's, a, there's an argument for a really nice, reliable, smooth inline four that just disappears behind the car. Oh, wow. This thing is like genuinely nice. This is a nice car. In sport mode, we're hearing that CBT get those revs in the right spot. You can toss it around a little bit. And it takes a bump. I mean, geez, I think I think that's one of the beautiful things about this car is that, you know, it has the appropriate size wheels. They're 18 inches, so we're going to let this guy go. You go ahead. You go ahead. I'm not going to try to make that happen. That's fine. I'm not, a, I'm not a crazy merger. That's fine. Visibility, something that you're going to want out of your daily driver, is excellent. I typically only drive 10-year-old cars, so I am used to cars that have nice low doors with that nice low shoulder. When I drive new cars, sometimes I feel very claustrophobic because, oh my goodness, take this turn slower. We have a Honda Civic Sport to enjoy. Oh, we're gonna die. Is that what's gonna happen? We're gonna die on the highway because you can't go fast enough? Oh my goodness. This is what's wrong with American traffic. Holy cow. I'm gonna let this truck go by because I really don't wanna die. So, now we're getting up into highway speed in the pretty much worst case scenario where you have to just get in it. Um, it has enough torque. It does. 
It's not a lot. It's not going to wow you. I'm going to try to keep the revs down just because this car is really new. You guys get mad at me for that, even though they tell me it's okay. You know, go for it. Do what you do. All right. Um, so here's that road noise, and there's beautiful Boston City skyline. Ooh, fast wipers. So there's a bit of road noise. I, I would atta- I would say two things contribute to this. Number one is this is kind of like a crummy, like textured highway. So first off, that's going against it. Second, it's probably the tires. Um, but it, it should be noted that when you buy this car, uh, you're not going to have like a super duper quiet ride. But then again, you are buying into an entry level car and you shouldn't expect it to be everything. It's not, it's not an S class, man. Uh, but I will say the ride quality is superb. So while maybe there's a little bit of road noise, that road noise does not reflect how I'm feeling in the cabin and how this is absorbing things. Ooh, we got a chopper, chopper overhead coming after me for all my dirty deeds in the Civic. All right, let's go back to normal. Let's go to econ. I want to see what it does in economy mode at 66 miles per hour. 1500 rpm this is just gonna sip fuel i love it and you're not gonna have to do that thing if you're bad on throttle some people man they don't know how to just hold their throttle in a constant position i feel like turbo cars just destroy their fuel economy with these people they don't know how to do it so final thoughts on the new 2022 honda civic i think the styling is phenomenal because it's going to be more of a people's car i think that's going to be a big win for honda it's not as polarizing as the previous generation which love it or hate it that's the situation. Sometimes people like these crazy, wacky designs. This one's gonna be a lot more of a people's car. More importantly than that is this interior design. I think this, they just nailed it. This is it. People don't wanna get into a child's car when they get into entry level. They still want a nice place to sit, a nice cabin to enjoy. This is exactly that. This feels very like executive in style. And it's almost, you know, sorry guys, it's a little German. This is like an Audi R8 kind of vibe. You know, I know that's like a crazy thing to say, but like, it's very simple. It's very direct. This is what we need. This is what we get. Drawbacks, no six speed manual in the sedan, only in the hatch slash lift back, however you'd like to call it. So you know, love, take it or leave it. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you're going to get the CVT anyway. It doesn't matter. And the other strike against this is the road noise. I I hope it's just tires, but it's hard to say. But to end on a final good note, we have a great suspension. This car absorbs a bump. It does not feel like a tin can. This is a serious fighter. This is a contender. A very special thank you to McGovern Honda here in Everett, Massachusetts. And if you're looking to find out how to get here, just go to the Encore Casino. It's right next door. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Well, hey, you're cute. Hey, bud. Lots of smells. Ooh, he's got those fries. He's got those McDonald's fries on his brain. Oh, it must be driving him nuts.